Thank you for joining us today for another Corporate College video. Today we're going to explore an area of project management, specifically looking at using Agile to execute business strategy. But first I want to introduce our speaker today, Andre Bryan. He's a part of the Corporate College Talent Bench and is an expert in all things project management. Thanks for being here today, Andre. Thanks, Ashley. It's a pleasure to be here. I do appreciate the opportunity to talk about one of my passions, which is project management and in particular Agile. So thanks for inviting me. Awesome. Well, we're so glad to have you. Could you first give us a little bit of background about yourself and your role in the project management industry? Sure. Uh, let's see. Ashley, after college and, uh, and running around doing this thing called uh, United States Marine Corps and traveling <laughs> all over the world. After a couple of tours of combat, I decided that I didn't want to do that anymore. It's time to stop playing soldier. And I ended up going back to grad school and then the law school and then realized that uh, I really loved business, didn't want to be uh, in law. In law. Um, got tired of the, the lawyer joke. So <laughs> I decided that uh, this thing I stumbled across called project, project management was really, really my passion. So I ended up getting involved in project management and about uh, close to 20 years ago, I got certified as a PMP uh, by PMI. And then from there, I just fully engaged for several years in various types of projects across multiple industries. And uh, at Bridgeport Group, we now lead a number of project initiatives for customers and clients across multiple industries. And one of the great things about that, Ashley, is that in addition to being practitioners uh, and learning so much by working with our clients across industries, we bring that same knowledge and depth of experience to the classroom. So we, as part of the corporate college team, are uh, providers of educational resources around Agile and project management. We support the uh, certification for PMP and all things Agile. And we also uh, help organizations uh, organize themselves so they can bring uh, specific types of Agile and project management training into the organization and then leverage the knowledge of the workforce to actually deploy these skills and these tools across their footprint. So. That's our story, and, uh, and we just love working with the college to bring some of these agile and project management solutions to the market. That's awesome, and especially the fact that you're both in the industry and teaching, so you're bringing really what's the latest and greatest of what's going on to the educational piece, so you know, students and organizations are really well prepared when they want to implement these strategies. Absolutely, and it's a great combination because uh, in our courses, too, when students take our classes, even the certification class, we encourage them to bring their real world projects into the classroom. So the thing that's so unique about the learning experience at corporate colleges, as they are learning a particular subject matter and learning tools, they're actually applying them and taking them back to work the very next day. So it's really good with respect to helping them understand the concepts but also to execute on the concepts. That's awesome. And so important that it's not just like a textbook um, of information that they're learning, that they're really applying it and having practical skills when they leave. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's great. I, I, we get uh, uh, a lot of students, the last part uh, about that, we have a lot of students that not only come back and say how great the experience is, but during the sessions, we also encourage students, especially if they're across multiple industries, to collaborate. So we set up the classroom scenario in an agile-like manner where they have an opportunity to actually work in teams on their various projects, almost as though they are in an agile, uh, real-world scenario. And those relationships, we hear about those all the time. Those relationships, oh, that's awesome. that's yeah, they're built in the classroom and those relationships carry on, which is also a great thing. Yeah, just so much that goes beyond the classroom learning into the real world, which is fantastic. Yeah. So speaking of which, um, you know, what is Agile as it relates to project management? And then how are companies using um, it as part of their business strategy? Great question. 
Agile is a methodology within project management, and it's been around for a while. I started practicing Agile and the principles of Agile close to about 10 years ago now. Uh, and what uh, Agile does is it takes the project management process and kind of flips it on its head. Mm. And it's really a methodology around delivering value quickly to our customers. And whether that value is in the form of a product that we're developing or service that we're providing, and whether that customer is internal or external, Agile as a methodology uh, is a proven way to ensure that we complete work in a manner that really satisfy all the requirements of a project. Now, in order to execute Agile, because everyone's heard this terminology, Agile, and what is it, what is it, what is it? Agile really is a mindset. So it is project management. However, it's a mindset that's truly focused on our organization will deliver business value, real value to our customers. And we will do that in a manner that's, that's rapid and that actually meets their needs. And that's what Agile is. Wow. So how are companies doing this then? Like adding, as you said, it's not just the methodology, really. It's the mindset. Yes. Yes. And, and several companies are doing it extremely well and other companies not so well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and the ones that are not so well are the ones that we encourage to come to the college and spend some time with us to improve. But the companies that are implementing it well has really committed themselves to being more customer driven and more value focused. And if we think about these days and times, especially amidst this unusual times, companies that are surviving and thriving are the ones that are much more competitive and they're more competitive because they bring innovation and value to their customers. They remove risk for customers and uncertainty and they actually have really happy employees that like doing the work in order to remove those types of risks for the customer base. So the companies that are leveraging Agile and doing well, they tend to be uh, more, uh, they have that Agile mindset within the organization. They've built a culture of, uh, of learning. They've built a culture of leading. Uh, they've built a culture that allows the workforce to actually implement these new tools and these Agile things that they learn. Uh, they have a mindset to uh, be focused on delivering value in short term, almost immediately or as quickly mm. as possible. And they're really using Agile to build their reputation. So they may not be running around with an Agile banner, but okay. they're using Agile to build their reputation as a very forward thinking and um, uh, performance oriented company. If you think about Agile, you know, it really cut its teeth in a software development world, right? And, and you think about how quickly apps change, right? Mm -hmm. There's an app on our phone and before we know it, there's a modification and an update to that app. You've got to do that stuff really quickly and it's got to be high quality and high end. You've got to deliver value quickly. Companies that have adopted this are transforming themselves and they're actually providing a uh, uh, them or positioning themselves for future growth in the marketplace. Wow. And that's so exciting to see for, for those individuals and companies that are doing well at that. But then the ones that are struggling, you know, why is it so difficult for them to implement, um, you know, and execute Agile as a strategy for themselves? Yeah, it's, di it's difficult because there's a, uh, a undergirding of discipline that has to be within the organization. Uh, it's challenging because of some of the productivity killers we talk about all the time mm -hmm. in project management. It's difficult because the leadership says, you know, we've never done it that way before, right? We've all heard that. The staff says, we don't do it that way in this organization. It's difficult because there's very little involvement in the organization from various aspects in various departments because they're so siloed that, yeah. uh, departments work within themselves. It's difficult because uh, historically, we haven't brought the customer in to many aspects of what we're doing on their behalf. So transparency doesn't exist at all in several organizations. It's difficult because any type of change is not easy. 
So many organizations are having a difficult time bringing this in for all of those productivity killers, all of those reasons I just mentioned, and the commitment from leadership to turn the ship may not be there for many reasons. But if that's not there, it's going to always be difficult to truly bring Agile in to a point where you can maximize the benefits of Agile. I think you named so many things that people can identify, you know, whether it's their current current organization or a past organization of things, whether it's being siloed or, you know, not having the customers part of the collaboration and the communication during processes. I mean, there's so many aspects that, you know, we don't realize that those little tweaks, those little changes can make such a big difference as we're, you know, going along with a project and trying to implement something successfully. So true. And, um, it's, it's almost like we end up with these blinders on once mm-hmm. we're in the organization. And that, that terminology, really, I hear it all the time. We just don't do it that way. And the question always is why? You know, so to your point, uh, so many organizations are kind of stuck in this uh, status quo business as usual. And the major problem with that is that everything external to the organization is changing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so it requires some internal changes to meet the new external changes and the demands and the requirements that the external changes bring. And any organization, and that's why if you look at, you know, which companies are growing now versus those that are probably won't be around post uh, the pandemic, if you look at those organizations and you see, well, what's different between the ones that are successful and thriving during these times and the ones that are failing, I think what you find is that internally, especially with respect to the leadership, they haven't designed or developed a strategic approach Mm. to bring in something like agile in order to move the ball forward. So strategy then becomes a big part of what's necessary. And um, many organizations just haven't taken that step to uh, to address change through strategy. That's huge. So, you know, we think of strategy, it's actually sitting down and thinking about ways to implement something. So when an organization does want to do that, you know, what type of agile techniques, um, you know, could their teams use to advance their strategy? Great question. There are a number in our agile world and the methodology of agile and the principles that we teach at the college and that we practice in in the, uh, the workplace. The goal is to have good quality, rapid delivery through shorter releases and shorter timeframes. So the tools and the techniques to actually develop strategies should be done in an agile-like manner, right? So it should not take a year to develop a two-year strategy. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Right? And sometimes that's the case. Organizations get into this analysis uh, paralysis and it takes them a while before they can actually develop their strategy. Mm -hmm. Like you said, a way of approaching things and addressing changes that happens in the marketplace. What Agile does and how Agile helps uh, leaders and organizations establish strategy is encouraging that transparency that I talked about, right? Having open and honest, crucial conversations and dialogue. Agile permits that type of environment to happen so there can be some honesty with respect to where the weaknesses and challenges are versus where the opportunities are right so oftentimes we talk about SWOT analysis I like to have our students look at a toes really focus on the threats first Mm. identify the opportunities why are we weak where we can't address these opportunities right now And then what would we have to transform ourselves to be using Agile so we have the strength to address the weakness and that way we can go after the opportunities and remove the threats, right? So it's kind of a unique way, but it's one of the tools that we always encourage our our leadership to take a look at when it comes to implementing strategy. Also, you cannot implement strategy without having rich data. You know, data's Mm got to be really strong. And we encourage use Agile when developing that strategic approach to the marketplace by capturing data, but also capturing the right data, but most importantly, analyzing it for decision making. Okay. Can't have a strategy without data 
and analyzing data for decision making. And that's what Agile permits. And last but not least, uh, that mindset of continuous improvement, that strategy should be strong enough yet flexible enough to allow for continuous improvement. And that's where Agile would help leadership develop a strategy for continuous improvement as a part of, as they go along the Agile journey to produce quality and deliver value quickly to their customers. Yeah, that's so helpful in the sense of like thinking about asking the right questions, you know, looking at the data, probably asking more questions again after that, and then looking at, you know, okay, how can we develop this into something that's really going to, you know, implement the change that we want to see um, along the way to, to streamline a lot, you know, for project management. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. What, what we realize is that uh, strategy should be based on outcomes mm. and not outputs. So here's the problem, Ashley, and, and, and I'm glad we're going down this discussion and this path and how Agile actually helps support a robust and a very strong strategy and strategic approach. Typically what happens in organizations is the leadership sets a strategy and it's never executed on by those that are responsible for executing the strategy. The leadership is actually accountable to the strategy and they make the organization accountable, but there's a misalignment. The reason there's a misalignment between those that execute and those that set the strategy is that the strategy oftentimes is based on or translated as outputs. They're mm -hmm. a verb. Strategy should not be a verb. Strategy is not a to-do. Strategy is an is, <laughs> if you think about it. So what happens is that uh, we don't set a strategy that's truly based on outcomes. Now, what are outcomes? In order to have a great outcome, we have to base that on certain types of assumptions. That's where an agile mindset, to your point, uh, allows us to bring in an assumption and we base our strategy on those assumptions. But in order to have assumptions, we've got to start with some hypotheses. Mm -hmm. And those hypotheses often have to be tested before we can actually turn them into assumptions, which ultimately leads to outcome, which ultimately leads to strategy. The agile environment affords us the opportunity to go down this continuum. And that way we, as leaders, we can align our strategy based on a myriad of things to the execution of the strategy. And then we end up getting the outcomes that we want. Not that we hoped for and not that we desired, but the outcome that actually moves the needle in the organization. I know it's a long answer, but it kind of <laughs> sets the stage of what this uh, thing about uh, strategy and portfolio management is all about. Yeah, and I think that's really helpful. Honestly, I'll be chewing on that for a while, thinking about strategy, not as a verb, but as, you know, specifically, it's a thing. It's a thing, thing. you're actually doing. Exactly. And it's not just the verbiage on the, you know, the email that you get out from your organization <laughs> to tell you what your strategy is. <laughs> exactly. exactly. That's well put. Well, <laughs> well, and, and you just mentioned, you know, portfolio management, which, you know, a lot of organizations are, are doing, you know, how, how does agile, you know, an agile strategy fit into that discussion of portfolio management? An agile strategy and portfolio management opens the door for us to prioritize. Mm. So uh, when we start to say we're engaging in portfolio management, where again, like, you hit the nail on the head, organizations are trending in that direction. Uh, in order to really, truly manage a portfolio, as part of the strategy, there has to be the ability to prioritize and reprioritize. And ability to reprioritize happens so much better in an Agile environment. Mm. So think of Agile as this conduit that allows us to prioritize and reprioritize as needed in order to successfully implement our strategy. And when we successfully implement our strategy, it supports the entire management and development of our portfolio. And then all of the good things happen from there. Productivity starts to go up, uh, even to the point where staff ends up being extremely happier and their level of doing the work. Why? Because they can see the results of their efforts more quickly 
and that leads to more productivity. You know, it's pretty interesting and unique is that when you look at the, like, the law of uh, the Pygmalion law, the higher we set the bar in the stage for uh, our teams to perform, the higher they will perform. You mm -hmm. know, it's like that old saying, uh, shoot for the moon and you'll reach the stars. Well, <laughs> you use Agile and you use it as part of deploying a strategic approach to portfolio management, you continuously set the bar higher and higher and higher. So the organization not only achieves its strategy, but it does it in a way that masterfully expands the portfolio and the management of the portfolio. Wow. And, and, you know, you're talking about this and you're talking about how, you know, when workers and employees see this performance, you know, and setting that bar, it, it keeps going higher as, as you're going along. Mm -hmm. So getting down to that, a lot of times there needs to be a, a cultural thing going on aligned with agile project management. So do you see a need for companies often to, you know, have to change their culture to meet these strategic goals or are, is agile something that they can just fit in with the culture that's already occurring? No, it's, 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 it's really a thing where a, uh, an organization in order to maximize agile as well as scale its agile approach, it does have to have a culture that would sustain the transition to Agile. Something that's really interesting, and this came from a HBR Harvard Business Review, uh, noted that 70% of the people within an organization don't know their strategy. Hmm. They've never heard it, they have no idea what it is, and they have no idea of their role as it relates. 50% of the executives in an organization not only are not fully aware and able to communicate their strategy, but they don't know their particular role in developing wow. that strategy. So that's a cultural issue. That is an issue within the organization that has not been either transparent enough, hasn't seen the value in communicating the strategy downline, and hasn't actually been in the, uh, the mindset of Agile to be transparent, collaborative, and flexible in its decision making. So the short answer is that culture does have to adjust in order to bring that agile mindset in the organization to reap the benefits of agile portfolio management and reap the benefits that they bring to the overall strategy of the organization. Wow. So that, I mean, just to kind of round all that out, you know, we're looking at, you know, Agile is used to, to execute business strategy, but at the end of the day, you also need a culture that includes that business strategy in it, where individuals are aware and willing, you know, to, to have the buy-in to really be part of that conversation. Yeah, yeah, they do. And because when I, when I create strategy uh, and I think about it as a leader in an organization, we're at a current state when I establish that strategy. I want to ultimately move the organization to a future state. Mm. whatever benefit that there is, right? I want to move to a future state. And what that means is that as we are moving down this paradigm of going towards that future state, I've got to be able to evaluate and assess the outcomes that I'm having along the way to make sure that we're hitting our mind markers and we're going to end up accomplishing the strategy. Strategy really is nothing but here's my way to get from here to there and achieve these various goals. And an organization with, if they do not commit to this and this mindset of how to set up and execute a strategy, as we said earlier, make it more of a now or an adjective and less of a verb, they're actually setting themselves up for failure. Mm -hmm. and, and we all have experienced those companies where the strategy, uh, not that it necessarily changes, but it morphs into something different because the organization didn't achieve its goal in the first effort of the strategy. So because we didn't meet our strategic goals, we kind of morphed those a little the next time around. We set a new strategic plan. However, we still have the same issues and all we do is find ourselves chasing strategy and versus uh, developing outcomes. Yeah. So helpful when you think about that in the large scale, um, you know, businesses that want to benefit from that. So I really appreciate you giving this like in-depth look at agile and, and business strategy. So thank you so much for being here today, Andre. 
Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity, Ashley. And I'd like to, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that all of this uh, uh, high level executive development and strategy, uh, we offer the coaching as well as the training and the certification at corporate college with respect to helping executive leaders in particular understand how to truly use a tool like Agile or Scrum to establish their strategy for long term, but develop the flexibility and the transparency needed in order to shift the organization uh, where they have a mindset that's conducive for uh, achieving the strategy. So come to corporate college, learn how to do this stuff. We'll have fun at the same time, but it really helps you move the needle in the organization. So thanks again, Ashley, for the time. I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. And we will put a link in the description specifically to our project management page. And if you have any questions um, or you want to find out more information about corporate college in general, you can always visit corporatecollege.com. Thank you so much and have a safe day.